how would I even get started in wood carving, right? I don't have any artistic skill whatsoever. I can't draw to save my life. I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what tools I would need. Where do I start? You start right here. Listen, my name's Johnny, and I'm going to show you guys what you need to get started in wood carving, right? We're going to go over the basic tools you need, which can be a strop, a knife, and some safety gear. And we're going to show you what you might need if you want to invest a little bit more, right? We'll give you a couple scenarios of what you can invest if you want to just get the minimum, the bare minimum, or if you want to put a little bit more money into it. And uh, I'll give you those options. And we'll talk about why those options are good and what you're going to be looking for. And I'll go over all that. And then there's other videos on the channel that you can explore to learn more about whittling as well and more about wood carving, what, what things you might want to carve. So we'll go over all that and more. All right. The first thing we're going to discuss today is safety. And with safety, we're going to talk about carving gloves. Getting into carving, you should absolutely invest in a pair of carving gloves, one that has a cut protection rating. These are ANSI rated gloves. ANSI stands for the American National Standards Institute. And whether it's American or not, doesn't matter. What we're looking for is a good measure by which we can measure the cut resistance of gloves. Now, these are A3, but what you want to find is something between A3 and A9. A1 is the least cut resistant, and A9 is the most cut resistant. Um, the less it has, the more dexterity you'll still have in your hands while using the gloves. So with these gloves on, they provide a significant amount of cut protection over no glove at all. So I can, this is a very, very sharp knife. I can rub it across this glove and it's not cutting into my skin. And to show you, right, this is absolutely a very sharp knife right easily taking off chunks of wood but again not cutting into the skin now the gloves like this they do provide cut resist cut resistance for slicing but they don't provide cut resistance for stabbing so if you stab yourself you're going to cut yourself don't stab yourself right that should be the rule but when cutting the odds are when you're new you're going to wind up slicing your finger like this while you're not paying attention. You know, you might go into the wood and, oh, I hit my finger right here, I cut into myself. And that's what we wanna to try to avoid, which is why you would look into getting a pair of cut resistant gloves like this. Now, outside of cut resistant gloves, we have another option that you can start to get into, and that is finger wrap. I prefer finger wrap, but I have been doing this a while. I do not suggest that you start with finger wrap. I suggest that you start with a pair of cut resistant gloves as a far better option for a new carver. So the way this works is you wrap the fingers that you're going to be using most in this material, this bandage wrap, and then the blade won't harm the finger as much, right? These are not nearly as protective as that. I can cut through with this if I tried but uh, light touch of the blade, it's not gonna give you those paper cut kind of cuts. So this is not very much protection at all. So understand that, right? The proper amount of protection, what you want to do for yourself is a pair of cut resistant gloves. So rule number one, or the first thing you should take away is I need to invest in a pair of cut resistant gloves while I'm new and while I'm learning so that I, I don't cut myself open and have to pay for a hospital visit. So that's the first thing to think of right there. All right, let's talk about knives. Easy to find knife that is much better, much easier to carve with are the flex cut knives. Now I mentioned flex cut first, not because of the best, because they are so easy to find and are infinitely reliable. These are each flex cut knives. This is a set of three that I got when I was newer. And this is a rough out knife, a medium detail, and then a detail knife. So what's great about these knives is they are solid. I can immediately start whittling off large chunks of wood with this rough out knife, right? Cutting out big chunks is really easy with this larger blade. And that's what you're looking for with a rough out knife. Now the medium detail knife can do the same thing, but just not as easy on those big cuts. And this detail knife lets you do smaller cuts much easier. So I can easily do a little V cut, a little other V cut, another V cut, and another V cut. You can do all kinds of things with a detail knife. Nice and simple. And these detail knives like this are just fantastic. Even today, having been whittling and carving for well over a year now, 
I still use this flex cut detail knife probably once a day at least. I use a lot of knives, but at least once a day I'll go back to this flex cut detail knife. That's just a a sign of just how solid and reliable this knife is. And how easy it is to sharpen, as well as how easy how well it keeps a sharp blade. Okay, so flex cut knives is our fantastic starting option. I highly suggest that you start here. But if you want to get something a little bit better, there are other options. Now, I don't have all of the options with me. I don't have them all available to show you, but I do have some. So one of the options you can go with is a company called Badger State Blades, and they make some good blades. Um, another one is uh, the Flatulent Retriever Workshop on Facebook, Frank Pamies. He makes good blades as well. I do have one of his offhand, and it's just a, another flat style knife. Right, this is the detail blade I got from him. He makes custom handles, and these are a little bit more expensive, right? But we're talking about cheaper knives, less expensive knives for starting, and a really good starting knife outside of flex cut are OCC Tools knife, and these are their logo OCCT, Ozark County Craft Tools. This is a rough out knife and a detail blade, and these are absolutely fantastic. And I have been using these. Not long after I started, I got a set of OCC tools knives. And this large blade, even though it's large and cumbersome, as a rough out blade, it's flat, it holds a sharp edge so easily that it is absolutely one of my favorite knives. I mean, look at that chunk that I just cut off of there. Look at that chunk of wood coming off so easy with this knife. Look at that, it's a big chunk of wood. This detail knife is the same, like it is just, ready to bite into wood and take off whatever you throw at it. I love the OCC tools knives, so they're fantastic as well, but they're a little bit harder to get a hold of. <clears throat> the fantastic nature of the OCC tool new, uh, knives aside, <clears throat> being harder to get a hold of makes them not as uh, popular because they're not used as often. With the flex cut, you can find these in hobby stores. You can find these on Amazon. It is difficult to not run across a flex cut knife in the carving world. So I, I recommend you probably start here, unless you can find OCC tools. If you want to go that route, go that route. But th these are comparable in price range. Starting with uh, flex cut is definitely a solid buy. Um, you'll notice my flex cut knives don't have the logo on them. I didn't like that high polished wood, so I sanded them off so I could put some tongue oil on them. And I like the feel of that quite a bit better in my hands. So the other downside of flex cut is that I don't like this shape of the handle. It's a, a whale tail handle. I don't like that curve down here. And they have some new pro series knives that are out and there's a picture of it right here. And those look like fantastic knives as well. If you want to get those as that's an option for you as well. You only need one knife to carve with. And really, we could end the video here and say, hey, I've got one good carving knife. Maybe I, I pick this knife here, you know, flex cut knife, or I pick this one here. It's a medium detail right in the middle, right? I got that. I got a piece of basswood and a safety glove, and that's it. That's all you need to carve. But if you want to go more than just that, right? Because that might cost you, you know, 30, 40 bucks for a, for a carving glove and 30, 40 bucks for a knife, and then buy some basswood and you're in the game, right? You're able to start carving things and whittling little projects. If you want to get more involved than that, because it was probably two to three months into carving, I decided to get myself a V-tool and a U-gouge. What is a V-tool and what is a U-gouge? So a V-tool is shaped like a V. You see that little V right there? And it allows you to cut channels. Now, these are things that you can do with a knife, right? So let's say I have this uh, detail knife, right? I can easily cut a channel in by cutting a line and then cutting it on the other side here. And I can take that little sliver out and I've got this channel that I cut into the wood, right? But rather than do that with that knife, you could just take a V tool and you do this and carve straight up. And I get the same channel. But with the V tool, I have the added bonus of I can add a curve to it. I can bring it along and easily pilot this thing far easier than I could with a knife and make that swooping, 
wiping, slashing, whatever kind of cut. And that's fantastic. It's great for making hair when you're doing faces or doing lines on uh, a snowman's bandana or on his hat. They are absolutely fantastic tools. And having a V-tool would really help you out in the beginning because it makes the carving easier. And the easier you make it, the easier it is going to be to get into the hobby and learn it. So other than a V-tool, I had a U-gouge. And a U-gouge, the same thing. It's just shaped like a U, like a little scoop, right? And this is about a number eight in size. And it creates a nice little smooth channel, right? A rounded channel rather than a V-shaped channel, which is just a, a right angle kind of. This creates a smoother channel. And this is fantastic as well for, for making lines and details in your carvings. So if you're going to start with tools outside of just a knife, what you should start with is a V tool and a gouge and probably about a number eight. Now, when it comes to a V tool, flex cut makes great V tools. And this is also a flex cut. Again, I sanded down the handle. I didn't like that glossy handle. And this is a palm tool, right? They make larger tools that have massive handles that come up pretty far. You don't want one of those, a palm tool. You can easily keep right here and then push into whatever you're carving or pull down into a carving, that's much easier to manage, much easier to handle. So if you're going to go for something outside of carving glove and knife, then go for a V-tool and a U-gouge and about a number eight, the gouge, and uh, about a 60 to 70 degree V-tool and you'll be all set. This is not meant to be an in-depth video on knives. I'm not getting in real in-depth into knives right now, not real in-depth into you gouges and V-tools. I'm going to make another video where I go very in-depth on all of the, the, the gouges, the sizes, the V-tools, the sizes, and we'll, we'll get into that. We'll talk about the meat of it and give you options. But uh, for right now, this is very simple. What you need to whittle. So to conclude on this, right, what are your options? And the way I see it, you've got three basic options. One, you start with a single knife, get a carving glove and some basswood and you're ready to carve. You'll be whittling away in no time, right? That is all you really need to get involved in the hobby. And that might cost you 30 bucks for a knife, 30 bucks for a carving glove and you're set. The other option is you get a set of knives from FlexCut or something else that gives you a rough out knife and a detail. You don't need three, but even if we get OCC get a rough out and a detail knife like these two here that works as well just a rough out of detail get two separate knives right that's option two option three is the better option that i like this is what i would have everyone do if i could get yourself a v tool a gouge and at least one knife best bet is a set of knives a rough out and a detail knife so if you got let's say two occ tool knives a rough out and a detail knife and then you got a U-gouge and a V-tool. This setup right here is what I used for about nine months learning carving. And I did so much with this set of tools. You can do the same thing, but you don't have to start this way. Just start with a single knife, right? You can just start with a rough out knife and get a lot done. And then you can upgrade and say, hey, I'm going to get a detail knife too. Now I've got two knives. What would you do next? Next, you'd get a V-tool. And last, you might think about getting a U-gouge. I would do that in that order if I was going to do them one at a time. So rough out knife, detail knife, V-tool, then U-gouge, or just buy all of them once. It depends on how much money you have available to you, what you're able to do to get involved in a hobby. But the first purchase, the very first purchase, no matter what, should be carving glove carving glove carving glove safety is first take your safety as a priority <clears throat> in wood carving if you don't wear a carving glove you're going to get cut you can see probably lots of little cuts on my hands from little cuts that i've given myself because i wasn't paying enough attention to what i was doing 
because I was too stubborn to wear a carving glove when I should have worn a carving glove and I cut myself. Now, that's my choice and that's on me. I'm encouraging you not to do that. I'm encouraging you to wear that carving glove. Look at that ANSI chart and find something up there on the higher end of that scale and get yourself one of those gloves. Keep it on your left hand if that's your non-dominant hand at all times when you're carving and stay safe. All right? Hey, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, if you get any kind of benefit from it, like the video, subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. And uh, outside of that, I'll see you in the next video. So click one of these links and uh, watch another one because I got more stuff for you.